I want to start by saying that my response today is the best kind of compliment I can give you. I want to take it seriously and say, Les, here's what you should do different or all those kinds of things that you might expect at an academic um, conference where you respond to a paper. I want to say, what are the implications for Fuller Seminary? If we take you seriously, what does that mean so that we are not the school of blacksmithing? The church as you know it is calibrated for a world that no longer exists. It's designed to solve problems that have already moved on. It's designed to meet needs of people who are now asking different questions. So what I want to do tonight, to, today as we have this conversation is I want to introduce two a distinction that I think that you played with, but I want to um, be more clear about it and tease it apart and then talk about what are the implications for us. I want to separate innovation from agility. Innovation is creating something that is new, that then is ongoing and that people can build off of. Agility is the ability to respond in the moment with some, to a situation that surprises you. When the assassin showed up at Maggie's door, her response to him required agility. She didn't sit down and say, you know, one of the things I've got to prepare for in my life is someday this guy might show up. Now, actually, in her life, that that's she may have actually responded, you know, prepared for that. But the point is, she was prepared. See, preparation makes you agile. That's why seminary matters. But what kind of preparation? You need two kinds of things. Character preparation, we'll call that formation. The capacity to instantly love the person who wants to kill you is not instinctive. It's cultivated. It comes out of formation. It comes out of reading scripture and prayer and hanging out with Jesus. That's not something that comes naturally. So the first part of this agility is the ability to, to be formed. It's, but the second part is you have to have already got the building blocks that you need in order to know how to re, um, respond. So she had already figured out that when you encounter your enemy, you embrace them. She'd already figured that part out. So she was prepared. She didn't sit down that morning and write out a routine of, this is what I'm going to do when this guy shows up at my, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning, this is when this guy's coming. No. But what she did is she had prepared because she had spent time thinking about what it means to love your enemy. Are there any skills that we can be learning that will enable us to be more agile? I uh, spend time in my classes talking to my students about the rules of improvisational comedy. If you were to talk about improv, there's actually you, know, you would think that the whole point of it is to be without rules. The only way you can live without rules is by having so ingrained a series of rules that everyone knows to follow them. Things like yes and. Whenever something comes to you, you don't push it away, but you figure out how to take it in and extend it, often in ways that other people did not expect. What if you add love to yes and? It changes everything. I think that is a significant part of your point. But I want to talk also about innovation, because innovation is something different. Innovation is the creating of something that did not exist before. When she created Shalom House, she was doing something that would be ongoing and did not exist before. That's why seminaries exist. We are to be the research and development arm of the church. 
We're supposed to be the group that's constantly trying stuff, constantly doing that experimental work and legitimating something that is new. There are, in the scholarly literature, five different ways that we might, uh, that scholars talk about innovation. And social innovation is one of the, uh, of, of the five. But one of the ones that they talk about is what they call the innovation of meaning. The innovation of meaning has to do with developing new ideas, legitimating those new ideas, and having those new ideas turn you inside out, just to pick an image. Let me give you two examples. I want to talk not just about Maggie, but I want to talk about, about Martin. I want to talk about Martin Luther, and then talk about Martin Luther King. What Martin Luther did is he read the Book of Romans, found this idea of justification by faith that was already there, took it so seriously that it changed the way the church practiced being church. It didn't just simply change a belief. It changed every activity. It changed what it meant to belong to the church. It changed how you worshiped in the church. It changed the service that you did out in the world. The work of legitimating a new idea, that's why you come to seminary is because you read scripture in such a way that you take your people seriously enough. You look at the problems, you look at the longings and losses that your people have, and you say, how does scripture help me reinvent something that did not exist before? That is, um, that is innovation. Let me give one other example, and that's with Martin Luther King. If you were living in the Jim Crow South, and you were an African American in 1955, when the, just as the Montgomery bus boycott was about to begin, there were only two ways that you could respond to Jim Crow. You could either lie down in pain or you could rise up in violence. But those were the only options. And the problem, as Martin Luther King said on that first day of the Montgomery bus boycott, was that you had to pick between being a good American and a good Christian. See, he told his people, you know that a good Christian always stands up for justice, and a good American always obeys the law. And the problem for his people is there was no way to stand up for justice and obey the law. So what did he do? He offered to them the idea of nonviolent protest as a way of legitimating something that was new and by legitimating this new thing, gave them a way, as he said that first night, to be good Americans and good Christians. It took more than improvisation. It took years of study for him to be able to do that. Years of study at a seminary in order to be able to do that. But what is going to prevent us from being blacksmiths? What's going to prevent us from being blacksmiths is not just the ability to uh, be agile and to improvise. It's the ability to go and study and take people seriously enough that we can legitimate new forms that will turn the corner for the next generation. That is our calling. That is why we do the work that we do. It's not just enough to walk, take the next step on the path that we're already on. Our job is to take people seriously enough that we figure out what their longings and losses are and we create for them a new path that they had never seen before. That's what innovation means. Thanks.